And we're back with a brand new episode of Football United. I'm joined by Moria Mandel and our superhero DC or Darren Caldera. It's uh, becoming a bit of a habit now seeing him on the show. Not that we are complaining. And there's also plenty happening in Indian football. We'll get to the bottom of all of it. But first, let's find out what we have on the show for you. Indian senior men's national team head coach Igor Stimats looks ahead to the big season coming up for the national team. We get you all the transfer updates from the Hero ISL. Let's begin with Indian football, shall we? I think it's only right. We've got uh, Darren Caldera on the show. The one thing that pleases me the most, and I think Darren and Anand will agree, that the Kolkata derby is back. That Absolutely. Indian football's biggest game is back. That that is something. I mean, the Kolkata derby. I guess you know everybody wants to watch the Kolkata derby. It's 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 massive again, but. You know, I, I wish we could have it with fans. It's it's one of those games where you just need fans in the stadium. But again, you know, like Mojo, you've been there in Calcutta when yeah. we, they've had the you know the derby and uh, Anand as well. I mean, you guys know the whole build up towards the derby. It's not just on the day. It's that a week, ten days leading up to the game, and you know, there's so much of buzz on the streets and everywhere you go. So you know, I'm just glad you're going to have the Kolkata derby again. You know, it's a it's a it's a big big game, and everybody wants to watch it. And you know, for players, everyone wants to be part of it. Not saying anything. Last season, uh, ATK Mohan Bagan won both games. Uh, Alan, carry on. See, the greatest comeback comes after the setback. So I'm still, uh, I'm still divided in terms of where this one will go because it's one of those big games, right? Which could go either way. But speaking of Kolkata, Igor Stimats has been busy uh, training the senior men's national team over there for a couple of friendlies coming up, and of course the big SAF Cup uh, in October as well. When we caught up with him, this is what he had to say. On Football United, Moria and I are joined by senior men's national team head coach Igor Stimats. Now, good to have you back with us, uh, coach, uh, for another session. Uh, obviously, you're in the city of joy. Has there been a lot of joy in the training session so far? Good day to you, my dear, and to everyone watching uh, your show. I'm so happy to see you again, to to be with you, but uh, more than anything, to be with our players, to have possibility of executing some work on the pitch and enjoying the atmosphere here in Kolkata, in the city of Joy. I'm just happy to say and congratulations to ATK Mohumbagan and Bengaluru for uh, representing the country in the AFC Asian Cup uh, group stages. Yeah, especially coach, because you've lost a lot of time, uh, you know, not being able to play football together as a group. Then came a few friendlies, then the World Cup qualifiers. You have a big season coming up, friendlies with Nepal, then the SAF Cup, the under-23s. Uh, just talk us through what your preparations are looking like and how confident you are going ahead. Yeah, it's uh, it's getting very busy as the as this year coming to an end, you know. So we are trying to use every opportunity to find out more about new players we are having with us. We had another opportunity now in the last ten days to see some new faces here, like Kepe from Kerala, Ashish Rai from Hyderabad, who were not with us for various reasons for COVID and injury situations. Uh, now we'll have a chance to see Seriton when when things gets together in Delhi and goes to Nepal. As you said, uh, October will be very busy and uh, there is a South competition expecting us and after that we have uh, immediately gathering to, to represent India on under-23 AFC Asian Cup. Because of Covid restrictions, certain matches could not be played. How crucial are these two games to get the team back in some sort of a, a condition for the big season ahead? Yeah, I mean, every game is a crucial, you know that, especially if we speak about uh, senior national team. So, uh, we're going to use these two games to standardize the first 11, uh, to to get more attention on the 14-15 players which are to to be in charge, I would say, for uh, what's, what's coming in the future for the national team. Now you spoke of Nepal. Nepal will be one of the four teams that you will face in the SAF Cup in October to be held in the Maldives. So, you have Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. you have Bangladesh and of course the home side Maldives. In, a, in what is a curtailed SAF Cup because of the COVID-19 restrictions and teams pulling out and all of that for various reasons, coach. But how big is that challenge? Is there a little bit of pressure on you because India is just expected to perform the best out of all these nations in, you know, in, in a competition like the SAF? Yeah, of course, this time uh, the pressure will be on us because uh, most of the people, not only in India and supporters elsewhere, are considering us favourites together with Maldives for this competition. So, uh, we will take full responsibility for, for uh, this tournament. I just hope that all players will be available and fit until then and that we can represent India in a really good way and uh, go there with authority. Coach, uh, 
coming to the journey so far, when you took over, you said that India, you're looking to get this team to play a certain style of football. Obviously, 12 months almost washed away because of the pandemic and no time spent. Are you happy with the progress that the team and the players are making? Uh, yes, I need to say that I'm happy considering all the circumstances we went through, you know. There was only one camp in the last qualifiers where we had enough time to work together and to prepare the team in a way we wanted to, you know. In the rest of the camps, we always uh, received the players of the season and we, we were working more on a fitness condition than on a style of play or, or football necessary. In, in the last third, which is which is obviously missing in our game, and uh, hopefully, hopefully we're going to have more time in the future to improve on this part of the game. But anyway, as much as we improve, we are still hoping that uh, uh, soon we're going to have more Indian strikers playing in ISL and I League, which should improve our scoring. Uh, numbers. This is the only number which didn't improve in our work significantly. How satisfied are you with the progress made so far? And what are the changes that you'd like to see or hope to achieve? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, by the time, say, January or February comes around. Uh, challenges were very big for us because we because we decided to to drastically change the team. We decided to uh, make new selection on the players. We were looking more for the more technical players who can provide uh, better passing, who are playing more straight football and and uh, exciting football. Coach, now coming to someone who's not part of this current camp, Sunday Jingan, who's. Obviously, yeah. this is to HNK Shibenik. I hope I got the pronunciation of HNK Shibenik, right? Uh, oh, fantastic. <laughs> you are I, nearly I, Croatian. <laughs> and just for the record, Sandesh says, in Croatia, if they take your name, everything is free. He goes to a restaurant. Just... Okay, okay. Don't go too far. Don't go too far. <laughs> but coach, how satisfied are you to see that Indian players are now finally willing to take make the move abroad and how do you think it will help somebody like a Sandesh? Yeah, you see, I'm so happy about Sandesh move, you know, it's, it, it's a great challenge for him and uh, he took it with courage, he took it with his heart and, and professionalism he is, he is having with him. Uh, it's not going to be easy to him, we need to understand that because the level of quality in Croatian league is very high. There is so many young, talented players coming out of these clubs, and uh, they are filling in all European clubs in top leagues, in five top leagues, and uh, the competition will be massive for him. Uh, somehow, feel sorry that he got injured at the beginning of his work, so he might miss uh, five to eight weeks of, of uh, championship there. Uh, which is not easy, but uh, Sandes need to get to get well first, and then start representing Indian football uh, in Europe. You know, only if he is 100% fit, fit, he can do that. And uh, this step which he has done uh, is something others will follow soon. I'm I'm quite sure about that. And it's very important for Indian football that Sandes do well in Croatian League, because that will bring attention from, from football world to, to this region here, to India. Uh, although I'm, I'm in touch with many managers in different and various clubs in Europe, and we are discussing uh, many more Indian players and their possibility of going abroad. All right, so uh, Igor Shimat has announced his uh, national team squad to travel to Nepal. And it's a pretty big party as well uh, that will be uh, taking that flight to Kathmandu. Darren, any surprises in there for you? Uh, I'm, I'm actually a bit surprised that uh, Udanta and Ashutosh Mehta both miss out this time. I feel like, uh, you know, Udanta hasn't been in the best of form in the last couple of months, but he's always been part of that squad. So it's yeah. a bit surprising that he's always got a call up in spite of that. And now when you kind of see that he's finally probably getting into his groove, playing on that left wing, I think, which suits him. Uh, I was a bit surprised that he wasn't part of the squad. I guess Igor Stimach decided uh, beforehand that this would be his squad. And Ashutosh Mehta, I think that player needs to be in the squad. He's a very, very solid defender. And he's somebody who can offer a lot going up front uh, as well. Um, you know, I'm a bit surprised that he's not part of the squad. Uh, but I'm really, really happy to see Saritin Fernandez uh, uh, back into the squad again. I mean, uh, he's been a bit unlucky. He was unwell the last time around. 
and uh, finally is here so i'm hoping he's going to you know probably even get some game time under ego ski match okay now time to get serious <laughs> okay. time to get serious the fun and games are over so seriously tell me darren if you were in ego ski matches please what would be your ideal starting 11 would sertan be there Yes, definitely. Sergeant is going to start for me. Uh, you know, I'm going to have a a three-five-two formation, and it's going to be Gurpreet in goal, and I'm going to have three three centre backs, and it's going to be uh, Preetham on the right, Sana in the middle, and Subhashish on the left, and then I've got Sergeant as the the right wing back. I've got uh, Glan, of course, Glan, another player who I'm I've been super impressed with uh, off late. I think he's been brilliant for both uh, club and country. I want to see Anino Thapa. I think he's also missed out in the last couple of games, yeah. and he's back. Um, he's been training well. That's what I've heard. So I want to see him back in the eleven. So that's Glan and um, Anino Thapa in the middle, and I want to have Bipin again as a left wing back. Every single time he plays, I think he gives you an eight out of ten. He's one of those players. So. He has to start for me, and then I got Brandon Fernandez ahead of um, you know Glenn and Anirudh Thapa because he's going to play in the hole, you know probably just do all the technical bit and you know you know spray those passes. That's what he does the best. And up up front, I have uh, Anand's favorite Sunil Chetri, of course, along with Manveer Singh. What Anand's favorite? He's all of our favorite. Yeah, all of our favorite. The nation's favorite, but Anand's the most. So then I had to take Anand's. Uh, you know, Sunil is Sunil. Yeah, the guy is is just. And who, who who's so, with Sunil? Manveer Singh, uh, okay. you know, Manveer cannot be missing out for me. He has to be playing every single game. Kerala Blasters have signed uh, Jose Pereira Diaz. Uh, your thoughts on on this transfer, apart from the signings that they've already made, which look impressive, Darren? Exactly. I'm glad you asked me this because uh, I remember Jose Pereira Diaz in 2014 when we went for the AFC Cup with Bengaluru. We played against him, and uh, I remember he was on the bench. Uh, for yeah, J- for J- for JDT, and he didn't start because uh, I, I, I was told that the coach thought. You know BFC, I mean probably steamrolled past them or something like that. So he kind of rested him, but he got him on on the second half. I think Prad will also remember this. And when he came on in the second half, he was a different level player. I've never like that was the first time I'm seeing a foreign player of that quality. He was just on a different level. So if Kerala Blasters have signed the same uh, Diaz from 2014, I think they've probably made the best signing. Uh, he, he's a bit like Di Maria, if you see, he's, you know. Gets the ball, he can dribble past the left, right. He scores a lot of goals, and uh, yeah, if he can manage to stay fit all season, I think he'll be a phenomenal player for for Kerala Blasters this season. Absolutely. Uh, apparently, there was a lot of interest from various other clubs, but uh, good on Kerala Blasters and their management that they finally convinced him to make the move. He's played for some big clubs, uh, as you rightly said. Some JPD, other side... Maria. JPD. Oh, yeah, <laughs> JPD from JDT. <laughs> <laughs> but there's some other signings. Mumbai has signed Cas- Casio Gabriel. Casino, as he's fondly known, Goa have signed Nongdamba Nawrem. Mm. That's a yeah. good one. I hope he does well. Uh, BFC has signed an interesting Brazilian player, Bruno Ramirez, uh, and Alex Lima's extended his contract at JFC. The uh, interesting signings, though, this Mumbai one, I'm really interested because some reports say he's almost as good as Hugo Bumu, or maybe better. Yeah, that's what even I've been hearing. I've been hearing he's similar to Hugo Bumu. Very very technical, uh, can dribble pass players. So, you know, and, and it's Mumbai City FC. I mean, you know, they're going to get the best foreigners at this possible moment. So, he's a player I would love to watch uh, currently. And then you've got, uh, you know, Alex Lima. I think you know we don't talk a lot about Alex Lima. I think last season as well. I really like the player. I thought, uh, you know, technically he was really good. I didn't feel like he had enough of support around him. Have BFC forgotten to sign an Asian player, Darren? With uh, Bruno Ramirez coming on, I'm not underestimating the potential of the man, but he's from Brazil. Uh, what but happens to the AFC Cup quota? Left. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know what the plan is. So I've been hearing uh, Bruno Ramirez is a very, very good box-to-box midfielder. Uh, uh, he's kind of he's going to be one of the main players for that team, is what I'm hearing. And uh, you know, I don't know if they probably if they want to sign. Another four now, or they are just going ahead with what they have, but they probably have to sign an Asian. I don't know what's happening. Uh, you know, I think uh, Eric Patelu is still contracted with the club, so they, I, I think they need to offload him first before they can get somebody. So I'm not sure what's happening with that. 